Hello and welcome to the MMA Equip Fighting Talk Show. On today's show, I'll be speaking with Rosie the Surgeon Sexton. Uh, Rosie recently announced her retirement from mixed martial arts. Uh, I will be speaking with Rosie about her retirement today, among other interesting things. But before we get to all that, welcome to the show, Rosie. Hi there, how you doing? Not too bad, Rosie. Well, let's start with the interesting stuff, Rosie. Uh, I noticed you've been attracting some uh, internet weirdos uh, on your Facebook. <laughs> um, let's start with uh, one guy in particular who left you a very interesting uh, present in your Facebook messages. Uh, could you tell our listeners exactly what he left for you? <laughs> to be honest, to be honest, I hate to say this, it, it wasn't one in particular. It's what? something you get every so often. And to be honest, I think... I think a lot of women on the internet get this. Um, you know, it's it's the the old uh, uh, guys who you're chatting to, or sometimes it's just out of the blue, um, who uh, decide to send send photos of various bits of their anatomy. And I'll leave that to your imagination. But um, uh, but yeah, that's always that's always an interesting one. Um, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a conversation killer usually. Uh, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, to be honest, talking to a lot of my other female friends, especially the women in the sport and you know, women who have a, a sort of slightly public profile, I suppose, in, in this certain niche, then, you know, it's, it's something that crops up from time to time. Um, but I was just having a bit of fun with it on the internet. You know, I've got um, I've got a good group of friends on there and I knew it's the kind of thing that, uh, that people were going to find amusing, so I had a bit of a laugh. <laughs> well, I'll tell the listeners, he sent you a picture of his penis, right? <laughs> uh, you say this is a regular thing now is it just like a one-off from certain people or you know is there certain people who like come back and keep sending you pictures of the penis you know like a regular customer if, if you will uh like a real you, stalker you, you know <laughs> yeah i mean i i do have i do have one or two stalkers usually not to that not to that extent most of my stalkers are quite polite um but uh but yeah yeah um like I say, I think it's I think it's just the uh, the nature of the internet these days. It's uh, you got to you got to keep a sense of humour about the whole thing. No, did he have the decency to shave for you, Rosie? <laughs> I'm I'm not going to go into any detail. You know, <laughs> to, to be honest, to be honest, I, I I didn't really look that closely. I have to say, um, <laughs> it's one of them click on click off type of deals. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those that. It, it, I don't need to see any more of that. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll move away from that and on to the other weirdos. Um, I'll, I'll class him as a grade A weirdo. Let's move on to the, the B, class B weirdos now. Um, now, <laughs> there's been the ones who've been giving you pet names, um, obviously. Uh, what's the strangest pet name you've been given by your fans? Oh, uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, usually it's fairly standard stuff. It's people coming, yeah, hi babe, how you doing sort of thing. And Again, it's you know I, th I think I think a lot of women get this. I don't think it's unique to me, um, or even unique to the sport. You know, I think it's it's just something that uh, some guys do when they're interacting with women. Um, I, I mean, like I said, with people I know, you know, with friends and stuff like that, it uh, yeah it doesn't really doesn't really bother me. Yeah, you know, it's not it's not something I uh, I really think about too much. But it's just a bit weird when it comes from a stranger, you know, someone who. Uh, um, I don't know. So it's uh, it's like I said, you know, if it if you're calling me babe, then I'm going to assume I know you well enough that if I need some furniture moving, I can give you a call. Um. <laughs> What's it mean? Did he did he even like speak to you first before? And did he like say, hey, Rosie, my name's such and such. Uh, I live in this place. Um, you know, give a little background or at least talk to you just in general before they start um, giving me these weird pet names and you know. Well, it's, it's some and some, you know. Some do, some do, some launch straight into it. But um, <laughs> straight into it. I mean, I suppose it's one of those things where I think it's it's again, it's the nature of media. You know, these days, if you if you've been following somebody for a while, or you you know you've been watching them on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, you start to feel like you know that person a little bit, I suppose. And um, but obviously, you know, if they haven't talked to you before. It's it, from from their point of view, it's, it's a bit strange, but. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess that's kind of how thing how things are really with uh, with social media. Well, there is somewhat a spam rolls here, so possibly you could be getting spam and not actual fucking real weirdos that's going on to your Facebook. But um, I assume one or two are real <laughs> weirdos and uh, doing this type of thing. But this one you cannot fob off. Now I was really shocked by this rolls. I was like, 
what the fuck? Like, what's going on with this one? <laughs> now, I don't know whether to class this in the C, B, or A grade in just complete weirdness, but um, people have been offering you money to beat them up. <laughs> Again, I mean, I think that's something that every woman I know who, um, with any kind of profile in mixed martial arts or Brazilian jiu-jitsu, will get at some point. Um, it's again, it's it's one of those things, you know. I, d I don't even think of it as that weird anymore. It's just something that happens, you know, and um, it kind of uh, just it's part of the course, really. Um, so what, what but like I say, I mean, it's, I, I, I think most women get that. Um, but to a lot of guys, it sounds kind of uh, um, they're a bit shocked by it because they don't know any of this stuff goes on. Uh, but like I said, most of my female friends are completely unsurprised. So what did he say to you? Like, did, did he want you to punch him? Like, uh, did he want did they want you to like roll around and get me an arm bars, maybe choke them out? Is there any like specific thing they want you to do? Oh, there's all sorts. Um, there's, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. And I, again, I'm not going to go into details because it's it's not something that I usually spend too much time thinking about. You know, I've, um, okay, fair enough. Let's move on. <laughs> um, well, I noticed the, the New York badass posted on your Facebook. As well. <laughs> Are you friends with Phil Baroni? I met him. Um, we, we were both. Um, in St. Petersburg for Bodog uh, back in 2006, I think. And uh, I got I, I got chatting to him a bit then. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's, I sort of follow him on Facebook and we, yeah, just, uh, he's, uh, he's a good laugh, Phil, you know. Was he referring to you when he said sweet tits? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think he was having a little bit of a laugh because it, 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 was, it was on my post about uh, sort of pet names. So I think he... Uh, just having a bit of a laugh. <laughs> well, we'll sort of move away from the freaks because I can tell you want to move away. I, I don't feel 100% <laughs> you know, comfortable with it. It's the first time I've discussed something like this with a fighter. So uh, let's move on to the more caring and spiteful sort of fans. Now, um, I noticed after you lost to Jessica Andrade that um, you received a lot of inboxes from fans, um, basically armchair warriors, you would like to put it. <laughs> Uh, they were sort of giving you tactical advice on uh, what you should have done in the fight uh, and whatnot. Uh, was that kind of frustrating and annoying for you, there, Rosie? Yeah, this is this is one of the things about being a fighter, or in fact, I think doing anything that's in the public eye, you know, where people people watch you, and people are going to obviously have their own opinions and criticise and everything like that. And it's always frustrating when you look back at it and you people say this. It's like, yeah, I know, I know that. I know that you're not telling me anything I don't know. Um, people come up with these, all these bright ideas of, oh yeah, you know what you should have done? You should have taken her down. It's like fantastic, you know. <laughs> if only I had your brilliant tactical advice, then everything could have been different. Uh, but I mean, you know how it is. It's, uh, I think it's it's the same with every sport. You know, it's it's like the people sat on their sofa watching it, and they've got all these great ideas about. It how it should be played or how it, but it's I mean it's a different game when you're out there it is you know? it's, it certainly looks easier when you watch it on the telly you know than actually being there doing it it's I mean I, I watch myself back and I, I do the same thing I go yeah you know what you should have done there you should have done this and you should have done that and, thing. and then you know the next time I try it in sparring you go ah well, it's a bit more difficult than that but um, but yeah it's um, it's, it's one of those things. Well, I, I like to see a flying arm triangle and a standing, you know, an arm triangle, but <laughs> it doesn't happen all the time. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got loads of great ideas when I watch on TV. It's like, well, you know, this works every time on uh, when I try it on the Xbox, you know. it's uh, Why can't I get it going in real life? <laughs> well, yeah. keep it on the Facebook. Um, after this, I'm pretty sure you're just going to want to close the thing down, really. <laughs> um, but um, there was... There's some nasty chick on there. She was posting a vile message. You, you know, you couldn't hang in the UFC. Basically, you couldn't cut the mustard. Um, comments like this. Uh, how do you feel receiving comments like this? You know, because it's not the fact that you're a newcomer to the sport. You've been around for a very long, long time. Uh, you know, you're one of the women to really, um, you know, build the women's mixed martial arts scene up. And for somebody to say this to you, how do you take that? You know, I mean, I think one of the big things that I've actually gained from being involved in martial arts, uh, mixed martial arts for as, for as long as I have, is that it really does give you a thicker skin about things like that. Um, I remember re being a kid and growing up, and one of the things that always worried me was what everyone else thought about me and, uh, you know, other people's opinions. And 
I think one of the things is when you when you're on a um, stage like that. I mean, even like. I mean, mixed martial arts obviously is becoming a bigger sport nowadays, and more people watching it. And you're always going to get those people watching it who have have their own opinions and want to say whatever. And those, the thing you've got to realise that those people, most of the time, they don't see you as a real person. But they see you as you're, you're this figure that's up there, and they don't, kind of don't identify with you with you as a real person who's got their own feelings and their own, you know, has their own issues going on and like that. They, they just see you as someone to. Um, a lot of the time, what people say is more to do with them than it is to do with you. And I think that's that's something that you start to realise when you get these messages and it's coming through that a lot of time people are people are talking because they want to talk, you know. And it's um, and they're going to have all kinds of different opinions. And at the end of the day, you've got to take that with a pinch of salt, and you've got to you, you've got to kind of water off a duck's back. I think. And that's easier said than done because sometimes when you. Know, some of them really do sting, you know, um, especially if, when you're going through a bad patch or you're feeling a bit insecure about things anyway and you start getting these messages from people and it's not it's not easy to, um, to just sort of overlook them and laugh them off. Uh, but I think that's that's one of the things that anyone, you know, that you, you've got to learn to do. Um, and that's something that I think you get better. I've got better out with practice. You know, I'm not there yet. I still have days when when I want to punch people, but um, but mostly now I, I can sort of take take a view of the bigger picture. And I think the other thing that is sometimes we all forget is that for every one of those negative messages that I get, I probably get you know a, a dozen from people who appreciate what I've done, who write, want to write to me and say, yeah, thank you for inspiring me to do x y or z or you know i really appreciate what you do for women's mixed martial arts things like that and to be honest i get a lot more of those um so it's that funny thing where you know you can, you can get a whole load of positive messages and then one negative one and the natural thing to do is to focus on the negative one and it's there's something about the you know the human brain that we tend to do that you pick out the the bad bit and really it's, it's about looking at the bigger picture and sort of saying well the vast majority of people out there are, are supportive. You know, they're they good. They're nice people. They, I mean, a lot of the messages that I got after I announced my retirement, you know, a lot of the messages I got from people about that were were really nice. You know, they were. I, I was quite touched by it. Um, and uh, and looking at those, it, it puts the the negative stuff into perspective. You know, when you have someone who writes you and say, you know. The inspiration you gave me to do this, you know, um, changed my life. You know, and I had a few messages like that, and you sort of think, well, when you get things like that, you know, some some idiot who wants to look clever in front of his mates, yeah, really, in the grand scheme of things, you know, does it matter? Not really. Well, all praise to you, Rosie. I took exception to it. You know, you lost to a a number one contender who's fighting this weekend, and you know a future number one contender and let's not forget you was fighting out your weight class and these girls were bigger than you so I took up section and I had to say something to her so <laughs> you know all praise to yeah. you Rosie I mean like I said I, th I think you know pe people are going to interpret things the way they want to interpret them and the na the natural thing you you want to do I mean is to get on there and defend yourself and that's you know that that, that that's the first instinct that anyone has when they're being criticised is you want to sort of say, well, hang on a sec, you're not considering, you haven't, you haven't um, thought about the circumstances, you know, you haven't all these other things going on. And at the end of the day, I, you know, people are going to think what they want to think. People are, people are going to come to the opinion they want to come to. And I think, you know, it's, it, it, again, it's letting go of that thing about worrying about what other people think. And I think you well, you know. I know, I know what I achieved. I know what I did. I know what my limitations are. You know, I know, um, and just taking that balanced view of it. You know, I think I think I've got a lot out of the whole experience. I'm I'm very glad I did it. Um, I think I've learned a lot from it. And um, yeah, I th I think going forward, that's going to stand me in good stead with whatever comes next.
Well, you touched upon your retirement roles here. Uh, you did make the decision to retire pretty much, what's it, about two weeks after the loss to Joanne Jadinski at Cage Warriors 69. Yeah, roughly about two weeks now was this a easy decision for you Rosie no I mean this this was a tough one I I, I had actually been thinking going into it you know I had a lot of conversations with a lot of people around me and there, there was going into it we kind of knew there was a good chance this was going to be my last one one way or the other it's not something I wanted to announce ahead of time it's not something I want to say okay this is my last bite because I think that that loads it you know that puts a lot of a lot of pressure on things it kind of it changed it changes the game I, I didn't want to do that I wanted to just go in there and and have a fight um, but um, but yeah I mean obviously afterwards you always think it would be nice to go out on a win you know you think I'd like to have this fantastic performance you know everything go right be able to really show what I can do and then I can walk away from it knowing that um, you know I've, I've shown my best and you know when things don't work out that way you sort of look back on ego uh, should I have another go you know maybe one more maybe this time is going to be the time and you see that so often with fighters you know going through so sort of okay just one more let's one more go at this um, and you kind of think well at the end of the day what what's it going to prove you know I, even if I did come away with that perfect performance that I've been look I was looking for and everything went right and everyone comes away going wow that's amazing what exactly does that prove you know um, because so much depends on MMA on who you're fighting you know styles make fights as they say you know with one if one opponent on one day you know things can go brilliantly and you'll win and fantastic and a different opponent on a different day and you're looking at a totally different result did all, and, did all this thought of retirement um, you know put a lot of pressure on you against Joanne Jelinski I mean, I can't. I can't say it made any difference when I was in there. You know, I think um, everything went well in the build-up that fight. You know, my head was in the right place. Everything was fine in there. You know, I'm. I'm not going to start questioning it and um, back on it and, and second guessing myself. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it, there's always pressure in a fight. You know, in any fight you have, there's there's always going to be pressure. Um, of one kind or another. That's that's the nature of the nature of the sport. Uh, but I don't think there was any more pressure there than there has been for a lot of my previous fights. Yeah. Well, let's move on to the future roles here. Um, Graham Boylan, he he mentioned in a post fight media scrum that he's interested in bringing you along in a a, a staff sort of role uh, backstage. Now I know we can't talk about it today, Rosie, but um, how excited are you for your future endeavours? Yeah, I'm. I'm really excited actually. Um, I know there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on at the moment um, that I can't really talk about. But um, but the sport's growing growing rapidly in this country. You know, I think or throughout the world. But I think I think if you look at the, uh, the what the things that are going on at the moment, um, there's um, there's a lot of things which are going to affect the, the future of the sport and. Um, that's something that I very much want to be involved in, you know, because obviously I, I care a lot about mixed martial arts. I've seen it grow right from the very early days, right through to where it is now. And I think for us to see it continuing to grow, I think there's a lot of things that have to happen at, at, at some point, you know, I think we, um, the way the sport is, um, is regulated in this country, I think it's something that needs to be addressed. So um, those kind of issues are things that I sort of see myself getting more involved in going forward. Well, you mentioned that. Are you, are you still involved in Safe MMA? Um, yes. I mean, I've, I've got... Uh, I'm, I'm not sort of on the ground doing the... Um, it's doing the day-to-day -day, day -day running of it, but I was involved in the in the plan, original planning meetings and helping to set it up, and it's something that I've been strongly uh, in support of all the way through. Uh, it's something that I think the sport very much needed in this country and it's really encouraging to see how that's come on and how that's been accepted by by a lot of promotions now. So it's um, it's definitely a real step in the right direction. Well, keeping on Cage Warriors, I consider them uh, the number one promotion in the UK, possibly Europe too. Um, you know, KSW and M1, 
give them a good run for their money. But um, they're certainly up there. Now, obviously, Cage Warriors are planning on putting events on in the United States soon and they're obviously putting on more shows on Channel 4 now. Would you consider them um, being able to compete with the likes of Bellator and World Series in the next year or two? Yeah, I mean, I think Cage Warriors has... Um, that they've done a very good job of positioning themselves in a uh, in a good position to, um, to to grow really I think I think in terms of their position with the European market and in the Middle East and um, the, the model they use really I think I think is I've been really impressed with and um, uh, you know the way the promotion presents themselves and sort of the professionalism of everyone involved with it you know something that I've, I've been very impressed with and I think it's it's definitely the way forward for, for mixed martial arts I think that they're um, the way they do things is something that a lot of promotions could look to look to learn from um, including perhaps some of the some of the bigger promotions as well um, well, I want to move on to women's mixed martial arts and the Ultimate Fighter 20. Now, the season's just begun filming. Uh, the women are actually in the house. I think they've been in for about two days now. Uh, are you looking forward to the show, Rosie, being a pioneer of women's mixed martial arts? Yeah, I think this is going to be really interesting. Um, you know, I think it has all the makings of uh, uh, of an excellent series. Um, so really, yeah, I know a lot of the women involved, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting watching it from that point of view. And obviously, you know, I think um, there's, uh, you know, there's, it's it, uh, going to be another step forward for for women's mixed martial arts. I think the introduction of, of a whole new weight class and a whole bunch of new personalities, um, it's it's got a lot going for it. Yeah, the women in this season they're very very talented. Obviously, that's why they're fighting for a belt. Um, there's still some to be announced. I think that's later on today. Um, I'm hoping Ash Bash Daly, a former opponent of yours, is in there, so that'll be fun. Another UK representative. <laughs> uh, but um, there's Joanne Calderwood too. I wanted to get your take on her. Uh, what's your thoughts on Joanne Calderwood? She's really hyped to win that season. Mm. I mean, Joe's a good friend of mine. Oh, um, yeah. I've, I've, trained, I've trained with her a few times, and I really rate her. You know, I, th I think she's got... Um, yeah, she's got every chance. I've, I'm, I've got my fingers crossed for her, to be honest. Um, I hope she does really well. Uh, you've also trained with Laura Howarth from season 18. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she was thrown in a bit early. Um, how's Laura coming along in her career? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Laura's developing very nicely. You know, she had, um, uh, she had a, a, a couple of big wins. Yeah. Um, that win against uh, Amanda Kelly uh, back on Cage Warriors in London. I think that's... Um, that that was a big one for her. So I, th I think uh, she's developing really well. You know, I, I trained with her again quite recently, and you know, every time I train with her, she's um, she's getting better. She's learning more stuff. Uh, so she's. Uh, she, yeah. I mean, it's it's still early days for Laura yet. So I, I'm expecting you know a few years down the line, I, I think she'll be doing good, really good things in that division. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing her getting back out there again. Yeah, that was a very tough fight for her. She took a lot of punishment. Um, how? important was that fight for her just to take that punishment and you know to battle through it obviously anybody can get a quick win or you can grind out a decision but to take the punishment and to carry on fighting how important was that for her so early on in her career i mean i think that was that was a tough fight for anyone because i mean anyone obviously who follows women's fighting um knows you know amanda kelly with a muay thai background um you know very very talented fighter um amanda so i, th I think um i mean for me, that was that was a crucial fight for for both fighters. Really, uh, it's sort of uh, I'm both seeing how uh, how Amanda is going to deal with a with a, with Laura's grappling, and also whether Laura, because I mean she's been known as a bit of a striker herself in some of her previous fights. So whether she could switch up that game plan and um, come out and, and fight as you know a wrestling game plan, um, that was that was always a big question mark. So I think um, that that was an interesting fight for me. And I mean, obviously, you know, both fighters com came away from that with a lot to work on, you know, with things to develop. And I mean, I, I, to be honest, I expect both of those girls to go on and have great futures in the sport. And I think, um, I think they both uh, both have a lot of potential. Well, I certainly like her mindset. I've been listening to various interviews with her. She's certainly taking things one step at a time. She's not in no hurry. So she knows where she's at and she knows where she wants to go. So that's what I'm really impressed about. Now, yeah. Rosie, you've had a long story career yourself. Um, thoughts some of the best, really. 
uh, been in some spectacular places around the world. Um, you mentioned with Bulldog as well, and um, that was a really spectacular venue. Now, what's your fondest memory in mixed martial arts, Rosie? It'd be hard to pick just one. You know, it's um, there, there's so many, there's so many good memories. You know, I mean, each each event, each fight, you know, has has its own. It's out there. You know, I think. Um, I think a lot of the Cage Warriors fights that I've had, you know, they've they've been pretty special. You know, there's the the fight against Dean Van Den Hoeven, which is where I uh, defended the Cage Warriors title. Uh, I mean, that I think was was probably my breakout fight. You know, that was one where I, I suppose that that was that was my biggest challenge at that point. Um, it was important to um, to win that one, and then you know coming back as well um, and fighting on Cage Warriors again after I'd been fighting abroad, fighting in the States, fighting for Bellator, um, you know, the, I had a series of three fights with uh, Sally Crumdiak, Roxanne Madaffrey, Ashton Daly, you know, it, it, all of those are um, fights I remember. And then there was, you know, obviously the UFC as well, that whole experience and fighting um, Alexis Davis, that was that was a hell of an experience, you know, that first UFC fight. Um, so I mean, there's, there's a lot of great moments there, you know, I think uh, I'll look back on. Do you think Alexis can defeat Ronda Rosa this weekend? I'm going to be really interested to see what how that goes down. You know, I think obviously, you know, Rousey's going to be a tough one to beat, um, but it'll be interesting to see how how Alexis deals with her. And again, you know, I don't think Rousey's fought anyone with that level of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in the past. So just seeing how that goes down, that's that's going to be an interesting fight to watch. However, it turns out. Is the one thing you won't miss about mixed martial arts, Rousey, and competing in it? <laughs> I bet there's many, but I'm assuming the early morning's waking up. There's always um, making weight. Making weight is always the yeah. I mean, I always say there's two things that MMA ruined for me, and they're um, chicken and saunas. Um. <laughs> um. Well, Rosie, is there anything you would like to say to your fans and our listeners before we leave? Oh, just um, no. I'd, uh, Appreciate everyone's support. You know, I think um, a lot of support from a lot of great people, uh, especially over the last few weeks. You know, um, a lot more than I expected, to be honest. You know, I, th- I had a lot of messages from people who I had no idea were, f- were following me or were interested. So it's been great, um, and uh, yeah, I appreciate the people who've been there all along for me, and as, as well the people, who, uh, you know, my teammates, uh, my coaches, you know, all the people who supported me this crazy journey. <laughs> okay, from MMA Crips Fighting Talk, thank you for watching.